Blenders are convenient to use, but not convenient to clean. Look at that. Ugh, these shoes needed it. These things are super handy to clean way more than just dentures. Worst part about making your own smoothies is the cleanup afterwards. These blenders are convenient to use, but not convenient to clean. And the blades are the worst part. This is the no hassle method to get your blender clean. You just need some warm water, fill it up halfway. You don't even need to rinse it first. Click that blender back in place and add some dish soap. Then let it blend. Pop it open and pour it all out. Everything just needs a rinse. No need to scrub those blades. That's as simple as blend and rinse. Of course you clean your coffee pot, but when's the last time you cleaned the coffee maker? It's easy and cheap with just denture tablets. These things are super handy to clean way more than just dentures. Fill the water tank up and then add one or two tablets. Then let those completely dissolve. Denture tablets are gonna be great to remove bacteria from the inside of your coffee machine and descale. Traditional cleaning kits can be kind of expensive. These denture tablets are dirt cheap. This works on all coffee machines, traditional and single serve. Then run your coffee maker like normal, without coffee, of course. Run the machine with the denture tablets until the reservoir is empty. Then fill the tank up with clean water, run it again to rinse everything out. Once the water runs clear, you're ready for a fresh brew. You can also use these for hard to clean water bottles. And water packs like these. Fill that up with water and let this sit for 15 minutes. And use a tablet to keep your toothbrush clean too. You should still be replacing your toothbrush regularly, but this will help keep it clean in between. Then after a good rinse, they'll be ready to use again. These shoes for sure have seen better days. If your shoes are made of suede, they can be tough to clean because you're not supposed to use water. Here's how to clean suede. You can buy specialty tools to clean suede, but some household items will do the trick just the same. Remove loose dirt with a dry microfiber cloth. Microfiber is great because it doesn't leave behind any lint. Next, you'll need a small brush with firm bristles. You'll want to brush in one direction. This will remove dirt and brush out those fibers. Looking better already. Look at that. Ugh, these shoes needed it. Now you can use an eraser, yep. Just a regular old school eraser. Gently rub on areas where you have tough stains and marks. And if that eraser is not quite doing the job, you can try a nail file. Just lightly file back and forth to bring that suede back to life. Look at that, you can clearly see the difference. Now I've just got to tackle this other shoe. If your oven looks like this, you're due for a deep clean. I mean, it could be worse, it's not that bad. Okay, it's bad. Luckily, most ovens are self-cleaning, so problem solved, easy as that. Just kidding. While self-cleaning is an option, it can heat up your house, create smoke, and take a really long time. I'm gonna share with you an easy, chemical-free way to clean your oven. Remove the grates, and we'll get back to these later. To start, you're gonna wanna wipe down or vacuum out any large particles from the oven. And while you're at it, remove that bottom drawer and vacuum underneath. I'm sure it's disgusting. Oh gosh, it's like a treasure chest of trash underneath here. Now to actually clean the oven, we'll just start with some baking soda. Add some water a little at a time to form a thick paste. We got it, thick with one C. Just gonna rub this mixture all over the oven, especially anywhere where there's those dark spots. Be sure to avoid getting the mixture on the coils. And don't forget to clean the door. Let this mixture sit and work its magic for a few hours or up to overnight. While the oven's doing its thing, you can clean the grates. And if your sink's not big enough, you can consider letting these soak in a bathtub with soapy water. After that baking soda is set, it's time to just wipe it all out. It's a little easier if you start from the top and work your way down. I'm gonna finish up with a solution of white distilled vinegar and distilled water. Spray it down. Fresh, clean oven, just with baking soda and vinegar. That's some clean glass. Now I can see my s'mores cookie bars while they bake. If you have a stain cutting board like this, you only need two things. A lemon and some salt. I'm gonna cut this in half, dip that half into the salt, and get scrubbing. The acid from the lemon will help disinfect your cutting board, get rid of any bad smells, and the salt will help grind away those stains. 
You don't even need a fresh lemon. This could be an old lemon that you were about to throw away or a lemon that you've already squeezed. You never want to use chemicals on your wooden cutting board, so this is a nice, natural alternative. Just give that a rinse. You don't want any water to soak into your cutting board, so dry it off right away. And finally, rub in some mineral oil to keep it from drying and cracking. And there we go, ready for our next recipe. Here's how to take a pair of regular tongs and turn them into a cleaning tool that'll make your life way easier. You're gonna need two cheap sponges and some rubber bands. Okay, not that many. Couldn't be any easier. Just attach the sponge to each end of the tongue. You'll need about two rubber bands per side. Just make sure it's not a dry sponge. I just wet this, squeezed it out, and now it's ready for the tongs. I like this sponge method, but you can also do the same thing with a clean rag. Now we're ready to clean. It's gonna be just this easy. Done. Well, I've got like maybe like a hundred more. Even though you're going one at a time, it goes really quick. Look at all that dirt we're picking up. Get some tongs and a sponge. I know your blinds are dirty. For an even better clean, you can make a simple dusting spray. Just grab a funnel and fill a spray bottle about halfway with distilled water. If you don't have a funnel, I'm gonna show you how to hack one out of some parchment paper. You just need a square shape and roll that up into a cone. Now just add some distilled white vinegar. Avoid pouring down the seam and you'll get a clean funnel action. Top that off with a few drops of essential oil. Before you use the spray, just give it a shake. Now I'm not just dusting, I'm actually cleaning. If these get too dirty, just give them a little rinse, squeeze them out, and you can use them again. I love this device, but there's also another method. You can do the same technique with a clean sock. This may seem a little wacky, but you have way more control of where you clean. Getting there. All right, I'm sorry, but now you have no excuses for those dirty blinds. Cleaning graters like these can be a pain. The cheese grater's just gonna shred through that sponge. With a used lemon half and a touch of soap, you have the perfect cleaning buddy. That'll loosen up all that stuck on cheese and clean those grates. Just be careful cleaning by those blades. And with a quick rinse, all that just washes right away. Here are a few items you should never put in your dishwasher. Insulated cups, anything wood, knives so they don't dull, cookware like non-stick, and cast iron. For these items, it's best to hand wash. All this candle wax may be gone, but this candle jar isn't trash quite yet. Here's how to repurpose those candle jars. These containers are so great and decorative, but we've got to get them clean first. If your candle uses a soft wax, use a spoon to scrape out as much excess as you can. Look at all that wax. If the wax is clean and you're feeling ambitious, collect it and create a new candle. Before we get the remainder of that wax out, I like to clean up any soot first. A damp towel should do the trick. Hot water is the key to melting all that excess wax. You don't need to fill it up all the way, just enough to cover and melt the wax. You can just let this sit overnight and that wax will solidify or to speed things up, once that water's cooled off, throw it in the fridge. Now that that wax is solidified at the top, you can skim it off or I like to strain it. With all that wax removed, you can clean the rest of the jar with soap and water. And be sure that none of that wax ends up in your drain. Now you can repurpose those jars as a storage canister or a planter. Thanks for watching Problem Solve. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out some of our other videos like these two right here.